Hello, everybody. Today is September 2nd, and we have some links to share with you for social and nonsense. Now, this one's a hotly contested uh, link because you have two sides who are saying the exact opposite. They are diametrically opposed here. There's like, no, what are you saying is 100% false or yes, we've known this all along. Which camp are you in? The five key takeaways from the Twitter whistleblower. Let's run through them. Here he is. He used to work at Twitter. He was fired. So that might raise a little bit of a red flag. Yeah. And uh, he claims... Twitter is riddled with security vulnerabilities. That wouldn't surprise me, even a little. Not at all. So he also points out that 50% of the Twitter workforce have access to the administration. Seems like so, a lot. Statistically, one of those people is going to be a bad actor, right? Yes. There's no way around it. And when it comes to Mr. Elon Musk, boy, did he love to hear this one. Twitter could easily calculate a better metric to estimate spam accounts, but chooses not to. Because he believes that number would be very damning for their business model. It'd be very high. And... He says that even down to the data center, there is no security. Some or all of Twitter services could be forced offline, perhaps forever. That seems like maybe a little hyperbolic. Yeah, I think that's probably true of any service if they <laughs> rely on a data center. And once again, if half the people have access to the back end, statistically, I don't know, I think I might believe this one. I believe that too. Twitter is vulnerable to foreign exploitation and may even have foreign spies on its payroll. Almost certainly, right? Yeah. And... Uh, Twitter has actually been confronted about some of these things in the past and made some promises, but according to him, they're not really respecting those promises. Twitter is violating its many commitments to the FTC. I just want things to be labeled ads when they're ads. That's all I want. <laughs> Extensive, repeated, and uninterrupted violations. Uninterrupted. They don't even take a break to pee. <laughs> So we have so much fallout. I hope I got these in the right order. Yep. But uh, immediately after that press release, probably how many minutes do you think elapsed before he had his lawyers on the phone? Well, maybe like five. He's on Twitter constantly, so I'm sure you he saw You think he tweeted that. him? He DM'd his lawyers? Yeah. Elon Musk subpoenas former Twitter CEO in legal batter, battle over $44 billion deal. Now, the thing about Dorsey is in the past, he has publicly said he thinks Musk would be better for Twitter. He says... Twitter, step one, to be fixed, must be taken out of the hands of Wall Street. Mm. And if you compare Elon Musk to Wall Street, maybe I'm in his camp. Maybe. It's a tough choice. I, I don't think I'd like Elon's Twitter that much better, but maybe ads would be labeled. Unless they're ads for Tesla, in which case they're totally organic content. Maybe. Now, unfortunately for this whistleblower and for Mr. Elon Musk, the news cycle. You have to time your releases mm -hmm. to catch as much of the news cycle as possible. I'm sure Elon's already released one on Friday just to spite us. <laughs> well, but that release, he probably wanted that to float for a lot longer. Yeah. But Mr. Zuckerberg went on a podcast. But first, let's talk about some unrelated Facebook news. Quest VR owners have new meta logins to use instead of Facebook. Remember when they were like, hey, you're never going to need a, an account at all uh, to use that? When it was Oculus. Yeah. So they... Uh, they said, we listened, you hate Facebook, we don't want to, you might not want people on Facebook knowing that you're playing with your VR helmet, right? And before you could tell that. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, get a new meta account. But they point out in this article, they ask you for basically all the same information for your meta account. So. They're definitely going to connect them. And now they have two copies of it. Two versions of your well, stuff great. they could lose. But hey, I guess it's better than Facebook, right? And if you are a Facebook user, you might get this creepy feeling that no one's paying attention to that platform anymore. That they're all checked out and they're over in Meta Land and they have like a couple of interns just, you know, smashing Hacking keyboards. Away at it, yeah. Yeah. Facebook has apparently been zucked by an algorithm bug that's broken everyone's news feeds. So if you follow, for example, Taylor Swift. Right. I don't know if she was on the list. Nirvana was on the list, which is weird. I wonder who controls the Nirvana Facebook. Probably is like an estate or trust or someone who d deals with maybe the public persona. A lawyer. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, Dave Grohl might still. <laughs> he runs a Facebook page in his spare time <laughs> for a band he was in 20 years ago. But some people, uh, 
Nirvana being one example. Uh, Coldplay, John Cena, John Cena, Cristiano Ronaldo. He's a soccer player, right? Yeah. If you follow them and anybody replied to their feed, you would see the reply on your feed as if it came from them. So your news feed was just constant spam. And of course, once people figured that out, they started taking advantage of it. Copy pasta, swastika emotes. Yeah, the worst thing imaginable that people could get away with. All the stuff that you can imagine, which is interesting because this, I think this happened before, this was August 24th, during the podcast, they were talking, he was talking to Joe Rogan, he was like, yeah, I don't like working on Facebook. Waking up in the morning and reading my phone, it's all bad news about Facebook, and I just don't like that. I want to work on Meta. Well, that was the, so the, well, we can talk about it when we get to it, but like the sub headline said that, but they took his comment out of context, I think. Like he said he didn't like working on Facebook, but he didn't talk about waking up on his phone and being depressed about that. He was talking about like the notifications in general from every app. Oh, yeah. Well, he said it was like being punched in the stomach reading about Facebook. So throw away your phone, Mark. You can afford to do that. And uh, we saw last week, the they, was it Spain? They rolled out Horizons on the metaverse in Spain, and he used that horrible, horrible picture. You know why that image was bad? And pro- so part of the reason he looks crazy is because he's got that weird haircut, which is like a Roman emperor, but he also doesn't have any eyebrows. Hmm. And that immediately makes him look weirder. Oh, you think they're just really lightly colored? Yeah, I think they're just really light. And like because of that... It makes it just look like Uncanny Valley, like he's always looking at you like this. I don't know that he can do a whole lot with that hair, though. That would naturally probably turn into a fro, right? I don't know. I've heard that he likes to keep his hair cut that way because he wants to look like a Roman emperor. (laughs) I don't know if that's true, but I've read it on the internet, and I'm repeating that misinformation on our program today. Well, uh, here's the... Did we do the headline? No. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg responds to metaverse memes with a redesign. All right, get ready for it. I don't think we have a side by side. I don't know if it was last week's. One. I tried to click on it, it didn't work. But yeah, in is. this version, they've made his eyebrows much more prominent. Hmm. And I think that takes a little of the creep factor away. Surely he's got the money that they could go in there and like tattoo that or dye that or That's something. It's pretty common for people with light eyebrows. You either fill them in with a brow pencil or they do dye them. Uh, men maybe don't do that as often, but. He would get called out for that too, though. Probably. I mean, yeah. Let's be fair. He can't win. Whatever he does, we're going to hate him for it. Yeah. Because he's garbage. Uh, so maybe you do just tune all that out. But uh, yeah, so he we went on the, the Joe Rogan podcast, and so many headlines have flooded out. We're just going to talk about the three yeah. that I chose, but. There I've, were six or seven. Oh, so many. I've not listened to it yet, but I certainly plan to over the weekend because. Uh, I think from what the snippets that I heard, though, it seemed like Joe went easy on him. Yeah, I like, heard really easy. like the one of these articles said that it was kind of a nothing burger. Like yeah. Mark was not particularly interesting guess. But guess. he did say some interesting things. Mark Zuckerberg responds to memes calling him a robot, tells Joe Rogan that Senate hearings aren't set up to accentuate the humanity of the subject. Which is a very robot response, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He could have been like, hey, I was kind of nervous, you know, and emphasize his emotions a little bit. And like, I was feeling nervous and I didn't know how to act. I knew there's a lot of cameras on me, like, but no, accentuate the humanity of the subject. Kind of doubled down on the robot yeah. with that response. Interesting. But Joe didn't follow up with it. Although I guess you get, when you're face to face with somebody like that, looking across the table, it does have to be hard to. Do you think he, look, uh, yes, I haven't listened to it. So maybe he did try and he just kept giving like. I think his exact quote, it was toward the end of the interview, and he was just trying to make a joke. I mean, you know, Joe Rogan is a comedian at the end of the day. And he was like, you know, I wanted you on here because I think you'd have interesting things to say, and I like you, but I didn't like the way you drank water at the Cynic. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if they ate Sweet Baby Ray's together. Smoked oh, meats. I bet uh, Joe Rogan doesn't eat anything like that. I bet he was just like... Yeah, I'm going to make some elk that I killed, but we're not putting any sugar on it. Oh, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Mark Zuckerberg loves the smoked meats. If the old That's memes. true. He made the go. Yeah. Maybe they could bond on that. Yeah, you have to listen to it, I guess. I haven't seen it. How much would you pay to see let, Mark Zuckerberg couldn't have editing control. It would have to Joe would have to get final cut. He would have to control the production team, but the two of them going elk hunting, elk bow hunting together. That would be interesting. That would that would break the internet with the number of views. That'd be amazing. I can't imagine Mark Zuckerberg in any kind of natural environment. What if, you know, like just doubling down again on the robot thing, every shot he took was just perfect accuracy. 
Like he's the- really he's actually really good. And like they go up a mountain and it's high elevation and it's raining and like everyone is kind of like slogging up and he just is like burp, 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 burp. <laughs> he's he's holding the shot and Joe's like you're gonna let it go and he's like calculating, calculating. <laughs> He's like, oh, he, he lost connection up here. <laughs> to, like hit him a little bit. He's going to have a 5G SpaceX hotspot. Thing on him. In his back pocket. Uh, and here's what we were talking about before uh, with uh, Zuckerberg talking about how he's not a fan of running Facebook anymore, despite it making him ungodly rich. Mark Zuckerberg tells Joe Rogan that running Facebook sucks and metaverse is better. Man who is currently pushing new project pushes new project. <laughs> So, yeah, he's a big and I'm sure it does suck to be in charge of a dying platform. Yeah. And that is what that is. Well, and and it's like they're trying to convince people that it's not dead. It's already dead. Yeah. Well, but it's so big, it'll take a long time to bleed. Right. Yeah. Someone needs to make a better marketplace. Imagine what Facebook is going to be like in the very end days when it's all just spam. And old people and and minion memes. Yeah, it's going to be something else. <clears throat> and uh, this was a big one that was, you know, this was only reported by one side of the news. Uh, but it does point out that we had some people in leadership who made some decisions that they probably shouldn't have, or at least according to Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg tells Joe Rogan that Facebook used its algorithm to suppress Hunter Biden laptop articles for seven days in 2020. So Joe obviously pushed the misinformation thing. He asked a lot of questions about that. I think he did. I haven't listened to it again. But uh, Mark said, hey... We didn't make that decision. The FBI came to us and they were like, hey, there's some Russian disinformation coming down. Watch out for it. And when that happened, they were like, oh, that's what they were talking about. So mm-hmm. they, he claims, totally innocent what they did. I mean, to be fair, if the FBI came to me, I might be a little scared too. Yeah, well, they do have guns and yeah. subpoena power. and They could ruin your life pretty effectively. But the FBI also had that laptop. They had a copy since 2019. Mm. So they knew that what they were telling him was a lie. They were just trying to control the narrative. And it worked. It worked beautifully. And I don't know that, like the way he described that, I don't know that he would not do it again. If the same thing played out again. He wouldn't care. He's like, I'm done with Facebook. Let's move on to yeah, Metaverse. That might be he would be like, well, you talk to this guy because I'm not on Facebook anymore. I'm over here on the meta. Have you seen my new avatar? It has eyebrows now. I'm told this makes me look more human. And we found out last week that Mark Zuckerberg is actually talking about Facebook Messenger doing end-to-end encryption because law enforcement can and will request your entire Messenger history if they suspect you of a crime, and Facebook will give it to you. The only way to fix that, end-to-end encryption, but of course the powers that be, they do not care for that. Encrypting Messenger could be grotesque betrayal, says top UK politician. I don't know the ins and outs of UK politics. I believe this is a Tory saying this. Yeah, I think that's the more right wing side of of their equivalent. Definitely. These are the the people who want to be in control of it. Well, let's be honest. They all want to be in control of everything. But one's more obvious about it. And also the people who are traditionally against big tech. Mm. For their own selfish reasons, but enemy of my enemy, I guess. I don't know. So uh, they're talking about ways that they could defeat that. I don't know how much power they actually have, though. No, they mentioned they're like, they just we need to be protecting the children. It's like, oh, there's that argument. You don't deserve privacy because children. Now, I kind of remember this. Did we do this last week or was it a different company? It might have been Facebook last week. I don't remember. Apologies if we did this last week, but we did a story very similar to this, and all has to do with the in-app browsers. TikTok's in-app browser could be keylogging, privacy analysis warns. It probably is keylogging. And they're like, it might not be something malicious. And it's like, well, it's probably malicious. So some guy built this tool that breaks down all of the JavaScript calls that an app is making. And so when he went into the in TikTok browser, which is the only way you can open a link in TikTok. Yeah. You can't open it externally. He found that, indeed, they were looking at key up and key down in that JavaScript. Now, TikTok has responded, and they were like, no, everybody does that. Look at GitHub. Look, we found some more code on GitHub where somebody else was doing this. See? See? Other people do this. (laughs) A lot of people do a lot of stuff on GitHub. That doesn't mean it's always best practice. But if it's not that big a deal, take it out, right? Yeah. 
Why not? Well, you know what? We do a level one podcast. It's only for the Patreon and Float Pain people. However, I the don't... L1 minus people. All right, L1 minus. Uh, I don't think we did one this month, did we? No, we need to do one we when are, Wendell gets back. We're behind the times, unfortunately. Uh, we will not be putting them on YouTube as they are exclusive content. But YouTube wants us to, I guess. YouTube.com slash podcast goes live as a simple explore page. This is just a landing page. This, this article is a puff piece. In theory, we could put the L1 show on this listing somehow, I assume. Mm, yeah. I I don't know how you get tagged in this. Maybe if you use like a hashtag, like hashtag podcast. That's how shorts worked. I've noticed that uh, a lot of the stuff I watch, they put the listenable tag on it. Yeah. Yeah, I've got that too. It's like, oh, do you want to listen to Birdsong for 10 hours? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I would. Yeah. Well, for me, it's like... Uh, Police interrogations and uh, <laughs> Warhammer lore videos. Oh, yeah. So they are very listenable. And in fact, I've never watched one. I only listen to them while I play video games, as God intended. Now, we've been seeing a lot of articles about how much time people spend watching TV, Facebook, TikTok, blah, blah, blah. Seems like there's an unlimited amount of data to be mined about this topic. Yeah. Young people watch more TikTok than broadcast TV with 15 to 24 year olds spending average of 57 minutes a day on video sharing site. The last time we gave you these numbers, they were about Americans. This is the UK. This is not surprising to me. The, the other crazy statistic that is in this article is that the like over 60 set are watching it for five, five hours a day. Five and a half. I don't know if I ever watched five hours of TV a day in my life. No, my mom would have yelled at me. <laughs> <laughs> You're rotting your brain out. That's got to be, they just want the, the comfort of the noise, I guess, right? I mean, yeah, they, I know my mom keeps it on, but she doesn't really actively watch it. She goes outside quite a bit, like in and out of the house. Although TV, well, you mentioned earlier, did we talk about that on mic where you were talking about you saw some, some TV while you were on vacation? Oh, yeah, I was on vacation and they had the hotel... Yeah. And it was insufferable. Like, oh, it was so many ads and like so noisy. And just, but did ugh. you flip through the channels at all? A little bit. Did you notice that a lot of channels have tailored their content to the old people? Oh, yeah. Because it's all just old, ancient stuff. Yeah, and the ads are all like medications, uh, doctor appointments. Diabetic testing supplies. Yeah. Uh, incontinence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the then there was a lot of like, uh, you know, poop more regularly kind of stuff. Mm, uh. But yeah, if you want to watch those old classic shows, they're all out there again. I wonder how much they pay to run an episode of Canon. It can't be much, right? No, not a whole lot. Green Acres? The other thing I thought was weird, so we were talking about House of the Dragon, the new TV show. I saw a lot of ads for It wasn't like actual ads, though. It was like little corner, you know how they have the thing that says shows up and it's right, like yeah. at this time. But it wasn't on HBO. Like I was watching HGTV. And it popped up like a little dragon and it was like, watch House of the Dragon now. And I was like, are people who are really like old people who watch HGTV and House of the Dragon viewers, is there, is that just two circles or? Maybe that's like if your kids are watching with you and are like, oh, we got to watch that next, grandma. But why would you ever watch something like that with your mom or your grandma? Wow. We'll just fast forward through all the, the horrendous <laughs> gore. Was there any, uh, was the, the overwhelming blatant nudity in the first episode? of? House there was a little bit of it. I skipped over it because I don't care about that. But it was like two scenes. There was a pretty mm. brutal childbirth mm. scene. I won't say anything else. But. but you have to admit, they did not crowbar that in. George Martin had plenty of that oh, in his yeah. books. Yeah. So they, they were staying true to the material. Not that they, not that that upset them. I'm sure that the oh, ratings yeah. always go up. When HBO, you show up. I'm sure, was thrilled with that. Nice topless shot. Probably couldn't get Daenerys to do any more topless shots. Huh? Didn't she quit? Daenerys like isn't through? in this series. No, but I'm saying like never again, right? She's big enough now. Yeah, I think she actually early on was yeah. like, "No, I'm done." Well, um, the metaverse. I guess I'm amazed that so many people actually want to be in the metaverse, but there does seem to be a. a who, is, who are these people? I need to know who the demographic is. Is it young people? I don't <sighs> think the young people are into it either. I don't the know. young people, I say, like an old person. Well, listen, you're, you're crossing over. Yeah. But uh, the thing that worries me here is that they're getting married and they might breed. 
Mm. And there might be more More people like this. A Taco Bell Metaverse wedding. Taco Bell Metaverse wedding brings a virtual happily ever after. This hasn't occurred yet, but it's a contest that they're running on TacoBell.com. So you have to explain to TacoBell.com why you are the perfect couple to be the Taco Bell Metaverse I went to the website and looked at it. What would you think about it? Uh, Should we look at it? I mean, it was fine. It's not like... It just explains what you need to do. I don't understand the appeal. It was like the wedding will be better than anything IRL, but I don't understand. Like, is it going to be like a video thing? Is it going to be like, I, I don't understand. Is it virtual reality? <laughs> we'll not only mint Taco Bell on your wedding certificate, we'll send you exclusive Taco Bell wedding swag. It's also, it mentions it's like a Taco Bell metaverse. Like it's not part of another metaverse. It's just Taco Bells. I'm like, isn't that kind of limiting? Like, is it all just Mexican food? It also said something about like, live moss. That's their lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. It was like, we really need you to embody the live moss lifestyle. I wonder how much control they will enact over your metaverse wedding. Hmm. Oh yeah. Probably a lot. <laughs> hey, my aunt, uh, <laughs> she can't eat Mexican food cause it, it upsets her stomach. Can we have an option for her? No. Uh, did you look at subsection 22? She is contractually obligated to eat four chalupas. Ooh. A minimum of four chalupas on camera. A crunchy gordita crunch. She has to be on camera in a VR helmet crunching gorditas. She's crying. My stomach hurts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that kind of thing might lead you to abuse alcohol. Mm. And if you do, good news, there's a way out. Psychedelics help people with alcoholism drink less. A new study tested... Uh, magic mushrooms in combination with therapy. Psilocybin. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a word I read but never say out loud. It doesn't look like it's pronounced necessarily. Now they did have to do intensive therapy before and after. And they did, um, you know, it was a... They had <laughs> you have a, to want to change as it turns out. Right. Yeah. Otherwise you're just doing drugs. They did a control group. So if you were in the, the mushroom group, you got, you know, like pills, a control delivery, but it was enough... To to notice or at least they weren't sure if it was enough to notice and the other group got antihistamines so yeah you wouldn't even notice and the people that they gave the actual mushrooms to were like oh yeah i'm on mushrooms oh. you definitely gave me mushrooms there didn't you so they were 100 percent able to identify that they were on mushrooms but they also had way better outcomes i've heard some new studies have said that that could be helpful for different uh, psychiatric disorders as well but there's no nothing conclusive just yet Interesting field of study, huh? Yeah. You didn't read any of these, right? So you don't know that. Yeah, I uh, like so I don't I don't like to I like to go into the nonsense section most of the time with very little detail. Our good friend uh, Glenn Howerton here. Are they still shooting that show? Yep. Wow. I guess he's still got enough time to do some other projects. Uh, new film Blackberry to explore rise and fall of the Canadian smartphone. What a straight look at the picture. His headshot there, smoldering. They do look pretty similar. Uh dye that hair and uh yeah they're going to talk about how blackberry was on top of the world god remember when they were like a soft keyboard are you stupid people need keyboards i mean i do kind of like a physical keyboard but also i'm kind of fine with swipe yeah it turns out the rest of the world was fine with it too yeah and actually preferred it based on the other things that they could get with that giant screen so they're going to tell that story this is, of course, the uh, World Economic Forum. Continue, I probably got us not demonetized there, but continues to push the new narrative. And The Guardian, I guess, is on the payroll because, boy, is this a fluff piece. Insects could give meaty taste to food and help the environment, scientists find. Now, Those are, the picture in the article is millworms, I think. That is, yeah. So there's mealworms. Some of the bugs you don't want to eat because they can carry some nasty stuff. Yeah. Millworms, I think, are fairly safe. Um, the thing about it is they were experimenting with different ways to prepare the mealworms to make them palatable for humans. What they figured out was what you want to do is you want to grind them up and add a crap ton of sugar. And then they're delicious. I don't know if that's going to be good for Couldn't me, Can you make like a flour out of them? Like a, a fine dust? No. Dehydrate are, them? They're definitely not a grain. They're a meat. No, I'm saying you could mix it with flour. Meatballs? Uh. Meal balls? Meal balls. (laughs) 
worm balls. Oh, that's, that's worse. <laughs> uh, tonight we have an angel hair with a nice uh, Sicilian marinara and, of course, meal balls. Mm. All the meal balls you want. Unlimited. Please take them. We have too many in the kitchen. Nobody's ordered them. <laughs> Are you still, uh, what's his name? The meteorologist? Chris you, Bailey. It's our local meteorologist here in central Kentucky. Have his calls been lately? He's been pretty good. Pretty good. On Pretty point. solid, yeah. He missed a couple storms there, didn't he? I don't a, think so. A while no. back? Yeah, I think, he was, I think he predicted a real bad one that never materialized, maybe? No. Well, that puts him ahead of the Hungarian meteorologist. Firing of Hungarian weather forecasters set off storm at home and abroad. So Hungary had a holiday. I took it to be kind of like our 4th of July. And uh, they planned a big fireworks show. Oh. Big deal. Big festival, a lot of money, you know, really good. And then these two meteorologists are like, listen, guys, there's going to be a storm this weekend. It's going to be catastrophic. Mm. We must cancel this. It was a beautiful day, but no fireworks. So they're out. Ooh. They're done. Wouldn't that condition you, though, to miss the next one? Like, don't you want to err on the side of caution? Yeah, I would think so. And also, wouldn't it... You, I mean, you might not be able to do the fireworks show, but I would think you could still do the festival and just supply, like, tents and, you know, no, they, shelter. No, they were thinking it was going to be, like, really super dangerous. Oh, weird. Yeah, like heavy winds and... Oh, you know, uh, like, like it would blow away any cover yeah. you had. Maybe they just wanted clickbait. Maybe they went too far with it. Now, this one, I definitely was looking forward to your take on this because, of course, this is about art. Yeah. Now, this is a this was out for 10 years in the schools before anybody called attention to it. But now they have called attention to it. It is weird. China punishes 27 people over tragically ugly illustrations in math textbook. Uh, you know, I don't think that's really what matters when, in a math textbook is the quality of the images in it. Now, but what is happening here, of course, he is grabbing her. I think that's a girl. It's wearing a skirt. In a, an inappropriate way. I mean, children, uh, they don't know. And then this, yeah. one, this one is grabbing a skirt. They didn't like that. Uh, there were some other things that they pointed out, like one kid had a leg tattoo. <laughs> oh, I'm getting some fresh ink this weekend, <laughs> says the five-year-old. <laughs> yeah. And uh, overall, they just said that they were not well drawn. So several people have been punished for this. Um, okay. I'm glad we're focusing on that and not the quality of the textbook. Also, can you imagine? Think about the stuff you drew a decade ago. Oh, terrible. And someone shows up to you. I, and they're things like, I drew like six months ago are terrible. Yeah. And they're like, Chris, look, this is so bad. We're actually going to jail you for this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's really an incentive to get into art. You have to be, you have to suck to get good. Now you just went on vacation. Yes. You came home, you reunited with little Rue. How did she respond? Oh, she was so excited. She like yeah. lost her little pea brain. Did you notice any tears? No tears. You probably should have looked closer. Dogs produce tears when reunited with owners, study finds. No, I've never noticed that. I don't know that they would be necessarily streaming down her face. No. I think they had to measure this very, like a very small measurement. She's a, she, I mean, she was with my husband too, so like... She was yeah, but excited. but you were gone. So yeah. she probably noticed, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she did. I mean, she was really excited. She was more excited about the treats I brought home, but... Mm. Were they Gatlinburg branded treats? It was a, like a chicken chew uh -huh. kind of thing. And then I got Cricket that banana, the catnip banana. Oh, yeah, you got a defective cat. Yeah, he's not... I mean, like, he plays with it, but he's not, like, losing his mind over yeah. it. My cats, like, just immediately start just smashing their face into it. Oh, cricket. They love it. Cricket just like holds it in his paws and like scratches at it. No, he might be just like a little bit affected by yeah, it. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be like, he's not super into it. Rue loves it. Rue was tries it to the, take the banana. Was it the Yao brand? I don't know. You might just have garbage cat in it. It could be. Yeah. Anyway, they studied these dogs and they figured out that yes, they do, when they are separated from an owner and then reunited, they do generate more tears, whatever that means. Next up, they're going to study keeping two dogs who are bonded apart. And seeing if they do the same for another dog. Oh. I'll have to keep an eye on that study. And, uh, of course, you're very concerned about bugs and other things. You talk about you spend a lot of time treating your clothing and yeah, I want to go armoring yourself yeah. against the insect kingdom. It turns out that all of your efforts may be for nothing. 
scientists discover how mosquitoes can sniff out humans. I, I, so I, I don't read the nonsense section. Is it CO2? No, that is what we thought before. Oh, okay. But you know how we love to genetically manipulate mosquitoes, right? <laughs> Which, yeah, seems like a bad idea, but... But we love doing it. So they actually genetically engineered mosquitoes with no olfactory faculties at all. Like, oh. just stripped out their ability to smell the way that we thought they detected us. They went right to another human. So it turns out that they have extra senses that can detect humans that we did not even expect. Sense. I don't know if it's a sixth sense, but it's just other ways, other receptors that they have, and they can locate us. They also believe that they love humans more than other animals, not only because we're hairless and weak, but also because historically we've always been near water. Oh, yeah, we set up our settlements near water, yeah. yeah. Now, Krista, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty loose in this office, but I feel like everybody kind of respects each other. We don't have a lot of HR complaints. No. But if I were to send you a video of, let's say, a dog having sexual relations with a woman, that might. That would go over really poorly. That would be a red flag. I'll and admit. I would imagine probably grounds for being fired. <laughs> you would think, but that's just here at our private business. Yeah. Not in a municipal police department. A Philly police lieutenant fired for sending a bestiality video to two women he supervised got his job back. Who was like, you know what? It's not that bad. (laughs) Well, that's exactly what they said. They said that. So this is an arbitrator. Arbiter? Arbiter. Arbiter. I think it's arbiter. Uh, Because of the whole qualified immunity thing and like it's impossible to fire a cop. They have the unions have got these agreements in place. It's like, okay, before you fire somebody, no matter what, how bad it is. You must go through arbitration. And they did. And the arbiter was like, well, yeah, this was crazy. But in the previous 10 years, he had never done anything else like this. So let's let him That we know of. Wow. You think he made the video or did he just find it online? Either way. You don't send stuff like that to your coworkers. How did he find it online if he found it online? It's a lot of questions that no one was asking in that police department. Here's the best question. What response did he expect? I don't want to get in that mindset. Was there some branch in his mind where where they were going to be like, oh, I'm into that. Yeah, was it like late at night and he he saw that video and he was like, you know who would love this? (laughs) My two female coworkers that I supervise. (laughs) That'll really brighten their Monday morning. You think either of those girls were dog owners? Well, the Finnish prime minister, she cannot stay out of the news. I love her. (laughs) Finnish PM Santa Marin? I think that's it. Apologizes for photo of topless women making out at her summer home. Uh, But she wasn't one of them? Look how sad she is. What? No, no, she was not one of them. So she was having a party, but this is her house. Right. So it was two girls and... They, it wasn't like candid photography either. They set it up. Once again, the, one of the videos that she got in trouble for, she was dancing for the camera. Like she knew exactly where the camera was. And in this case, they had the Finnish flag over their boobs. Oh. Uh, so it wasn't, you know. I could see that being a little more controversial. I don't really understand why people are obsessed with her having a good time on her time off. Unless I'm missing some sort of important piece of well, context. No, yeah. Her political opponents. Yeah. They want to tear her down. Obviously. But I mean, is this the worst they can find? Is like she likes to have a good time on her time off? Maybe, yeah. I mean, yeah. I feel like I have to be missing a context somewhere. If someone is Finnish or, you know, lives in that area, tell me. Because I, I, I don't really see the, the big deal. Yeah, is it kind of scandalous, I guess? Sure, but I mean, wanting to have a party is not the worst thing in the world. But, well, so the, the argument so far seemed to be like, why is she doing this and not ruling the country? But, it, I mean, nobody does it 24 hours a day. Yeah. I mean, well, Joe Biden probably sleeps 10 hours a day, don't you think? Yeah. He should at his age. He eats age. a lot of ice cream. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we're not angry that he eats ice cream. I bet when Joe Biden is eating ice cream, there's nothing in terms of governing going on in his mind. It's just the sound of, like, baked potatoes spinning in a microwave. And, like, the sloppy way that he's going at. So, it's, <laughs> it's, you know, it's like a boot stuck in mud. As he yeah, goes. I just, I don't understand. Like, I feel like I have to be missing context here. It was What's the scandal is, is her having a party? 
the, the scandal is she's young and hot and having a, an amazing time, uh-huh, and yeah. a lot of people don't don't like, like that. it. Yeah. yeah. And maybe she's bad. I don't know. Finnish viewers, please uh, weigh yeah. in on what you think about Miss Marin. I mean, yeah, sure. It's not great to have those kind of videos floating around, but again, like, there are far worse things to be. Yeah, Bill Clinton. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like, yeah. Well, uh, Krista, you are a big fan. You've mentioned in the past you do not always enjoy being perceived by others. Yes. Sometimes you would like to just sort of disappear. Yeah. And not. And if you were in a very crowded room and somebody was just, you know, eye effing you the entire time, mm. you might be a little. Yeah, skeeved out. Yeah. So when you, I first saw this and I was like, that's ridiculous. But I thought about you and I was like, yeah, it's like I could see Krista getting behind this. I don't know why yeah. she would be in this place. I mean, I like to dance, I, but nightclubs are kind of a weird place. You have also admitted that your dancing is somewhat unique. Yes. So you could get some stares. Yeah, but usually not like the leering kind. Hmm? Sydney nightclub bans staring without getting prior verbal consent. I, <laughs> I don't know how you enforce this. Well, they've explained they have a, a team of security personnel who are in pink vests, so they're visible. Mm. And if anybody pulls aside a pink vest and they're like, see that guy over there? He won't stop looking at me. I don't like it. They'll hustle you right out. I don't know. I, I do know, and this has been true for me and my friends as well, that it's a, a thing that women will do is that if you want to go dance, you don't go to a regular nightclub. You go to a gay nightclub. Mm. Because then you can dance and you're less likely to be hit on. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. But if that were a really popular gay nightclub, wouldn't the gay men say like, "We, I couldn't get in for two hours because these women are here taking up my dance floor? I've never experienced that, but... Well, they didn't say it to your face. They were thinking it, though. But they, when they were in the bathroom doing key bumps, they were like, can you believe these bitches out here? <laughs> these basic bitches. <laughs> How do you think it would work? Now, let's say I went to this club, right? I, they probably wouldn't let me in, but let's say that they did. And I chose the youngest, hottest girl in the club. Just, you know, like a 19 uh, Instagram influencer. Probably has to be 21. But. And I pulled aside a, uh, a pink shirt and I was like, listen, she won't stop staring at me. Like, how do you think they would do it? <laughs> yeah, see, I, <laughs> I don't, think I don't know that you can enforce house. it. Like, I mean, it's, it's a nice idea. I just don't think it's enforceable. I think they'd enforce it in the other direction. Yeah. But that would maybe the flaw. Uh, these food companies, they keep trying these. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I always put them in here because yeah. they're entertaining. But has any of these, do you think, ever had the desired effect of the PR? They keep doing it. Well, we did the, the story about the canned Christmas dinner. Christmas one. But we never were able to get it. I Ketch- tried. Ketchup popsicle. Yeah. There, was, there were several other ones. Yeah. This one sounds awful. Oscar Mayer is now selling frozen wiener pops. And they do have what they describe as a savory, mm. mustardy flavor. That looks disgusting. That does look disgusting. But just a raw hot dog also looks disgusting. It's funny, once you cook the hot dog, it still looks kind of gross, but we eat mm, it anyway. Yeah, delicious though. These, you see these stories over and over, and this is really short-sighted thinking. Yes. Extremely short-sighted. How, what do you think the maximum amount of time that you... Well, how long did you own your beater car? I had that car like five years. So you're going to get a surgery every five years? No. No, man. Metro Detroit man implants Tesla key into hand to unlock a start car. Now, if you're wondering why a man would do such a thing, there we go. He said that you could get this done in a tattoo parlor. You don't have to have a surgeon do it. Although, I'm not sure how safe that is. Yeah, it depends on the, the tattoo artist. You need to make sure they had good credentials. Look how douchey this is. Oh, hey. He so, just slaps the door. So they were interviewing him, and the very they bury it at the very last line. But the last line explains why he, the real reason that he did this is not about convenience. It's to get the attention of Tesla CEO Elon Musk. He desperately, desperately. Pathetic. Yeah, he desperately <laughs> wants to. Oh, I, I want to retweet. Elon, I need a retweet. Ugh. Disgusting. Weird nerds defending Elon Musk. Now, if you want a, a crazy, if you're from somewhere outside the U.S. and you don't know anything about the U.S. prison system, you should compare the U.S. prison system to your prison system. Now, if you're in, uh, you know, one of those South American countries where it's like, you know, 
hell on earth. Yeah. Yeah, that's worse. But if you're in one of these European countries where they take a really liberal approach, boy, is it different. Go-karting for French prisoners, a mistake, admits Fresnes government, governor. It's definitely not how you pronounce Fre- that. Fre- it's, it's f- you don't know either. Freen, I don't, it's, it's, that, that's, I know the French language enough to know that what you said was, was wrong, wrong, but, but I don't, don't know. know <laughs> Again, we need Wend- Wendell knows a little French. So this is a screenshot from a live stream of the French prisoners go-karting. Some sleuths looked hmm. into the identities of the guys who were go-karting. Turns out there was at least one murderer and one rapist Ooh. enjoying their day. This was planned as like a, a de-stressing fun day for the prisoners. You know, just get out there, do something different. Just something to raise the mood of your prison yeah. so they're less likely to riot. Break up the monotony. But it has gotten some serious criticism. I'm pretty sure that Prison Architect doesn't have go-karts. You know what? We should make a mod. Mm-hmm. Go-kart mod. There's a There's been some updates to Prison Architect. I haven't played it in a while. We don't have a game to play tonight. Uh, I might play it. And, uh, oh yeah, I wanted to get your thoughts on these as well because these are artisan trash cans. And we have three designs for you to check out. Rubbish, San Francisco's $20,000 designer trash can struggles to contain trash. So let me give you the the, uh, technical points first. Okay. It has to be able to call home when it's 90% full. Okay. So it has to have sensors and it has to have power. All right. It has to be... That kind of limits its usefulness already because not everywhere has power. You're not even ready for how much I'm going to limit the usefulness. It has to be non-graffiti or anti-graffiti, right? Okay. So if you graffiti this thing, it has to have some system in place to try and not let your message get across. And this is the big one that seems to have ruined them. It has to be impossible for someone to root through. Once the trash goes in, no one should be able to get to it. Right, like a vending machine. Okay. So let's... Oh, oh we got no. paywall. Oh, I'll do it later. I'll do it later. There we go. There we go. So here's our three contenders. Okay. All right. The salt and pepper. That hole is the only place the trash goes in. The the slat design is smart, I think, because that makes it harder to put graffiti on it because you won't be able to make a solid design. The fins. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the reason they use the fins. It's the, that's the anti-graffiti. But the holes for trash, very small. Right. Very small. And uh, they did note that most of them that they observed were more than 90% full. Mm. And no one was doing anything about it. Next up, we have the Someone graffitied it immediately. (laughs) Graffiti and more than 90% full. Yeah. Looks like some trash has gotten into the grill. The grate, yeah. That one's the worst. They noted that each fin was coated with an unidentifiable sticky gunk, as they described it. Mm. $20,000. Remember, twenty thousand dollars. I'd be working somewhere trash else. can yeah. designing. Yeah, San Francisco. And finally, this is the best one, the soft square, because the immediately you see the problem with the soft square. There's just trash next to and it. How humans will respond to it. <laughs> uh, my first thought in terms of like making it so people can't root through it is make it a bear proof trash can. Like how they do it in the Smokies or in parts of eastern Kentucky in some of our campgrounds. But They have like a latching system. But a human will be able to unlatch it pretty easily. Uh, You'd be surprised (laughs) how many people are... How stupid do you think these homeless people are in San Francisco? I guess if you're desperate enough, you'd figure it out. But I've I've watched people struggle at campgrounds with these the the latch. They just cannot figure it out. I mean, they figure out how to rob the Amazon trains, right? Yeah. That's got to be more complicated than a, a bare trash can. So yeah, that's uh, now that's twenty thousand dollars a piece, but that does not count the like half a million of R and D, and it's been years. I, I just don't like. Why not just empty the trash cans more? Because they're covered in graffiti, I guess. I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, the slat one didn't get any graffiti on it, so it's like just change out the trash cans for the slat design, and then just empty them more often. Twenty eighteen. It took them four years to come up with those. Something that bad. It took four years. Wow. Ah. Uh, cancel any time. Cancel. Uh, mm. Is there a dark pattern somewhere we can get through? There's not. Uh, well, I guess I'll just do the head on on this one because there's no way you're going to be able to read that, right? No, it's too dark. Unfortunately, go to the one tab. Uh, I will give you a pro tip. Without JavaScript, I don't have no script on this browser, but without JavaScript, you can read this article. But uh, Liberia, do you know the history of Liberia? Yeah. 
Well, Liberia is, we took some free, some freed slaves in the, you know, the American South. And we were like, let's put them in their own country in Africa Ooh. and make it Liberia, a liberty minded right. type of situation. It did not go well at no. all. So there was a civil war and uh, this gentleman was a part of that civil war. Now they, the sleuths have said they figured out he was the commander who commanded a slaughter of people fleeing the conflict in a church. Ooh. And they've got some pictures here of like the pews all shot up and everything and wrecked. He was found waiting tables in a restaurant in America. Wow. And somebody put those, you know, like two and two together and they're like, that's the Liberian war criminal. And uh, he managed to fly back to Liberia to beat the, the charges. So now he's back there. They called him. And he was like, those are stupid and they're fake charges. Stop calling me. Wow. <laughs> but the guy serving you your tomato soup. Could be a war criminal. A war criminal. Responsible for a church massacre. Wow. I mean, that's probably, it's like the, the other story we had about the Golden State Killer, where he just like was an old man, had yeah. a family, yeah. and his daughter did a DNA test. And they were like, wait, you're related to the Golden State Killer. Although it doesn't seem like this guy was all that. Like, he didn't prosper quite as much. He was still waiting tables in his advanced age. Yeah. But I guess that's still a, a big step up from war criminal, right? Yeah. People don't hate me here. They give me tips when I'm nice to them. <laughs> you think he was nice to people? At the, uh, you think he was, like, somebody was like, um, excuse me, this soup is cold. And he had it, like, in the back of his mind. Was I like, should slaughter you. You have no idea what I would do to you 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who I am? I hope not. Yeah. Because somebody's going to figure it out one day. All, All right. right. That was it. That's the last of the links. We're a lot of links, but we will have a fresh batch of links next week. Mm. And I'm sure Wendell will be back to tell us about his travels. Okay, stay and tuned for that. it'll be September. Yep. Oh, wait, it's already September while you're watching this. Mm -hmm. It'll be deeper in September. It'll be cooler, hopefully. September. Oh. All right. We'll see you guys then. Bye.